I want to see a podcast with Andrew Tate, Kanye West, Jordan Peterson, and Donald Trump. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk about the cultural phenomenon who is Andrew Tate. Um, I I was showing some clips to Lee, and he was also, you know, noticing that he's everywhere. Um, yeah. Currently, like, what is the most searched person in the world right now? Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to kind of understand, uh, like, why is this phenomenon happening? And then kind of just address some of the things, some of the points he's making and, and um, just kind of get like a better picture of um, where we are in the culture and like, why is this being received? Like, yeah. why is it a thing that's even blowing up? Um, so Leif, you want to like yeah. make some points that you've been, I sure. know I sent you on like investigative journalism <laughs> on Andrew Tate. <laughs> yeah, I've watched a lot of Andrew Tate clips, not like a whole, not a whole podcast, but like a lot of like Andrew Tate on masculinity on God, on friendship and everything mm -hmm. like that. And he, I, I, I think what's making Andrew Tate kind of catch on is even though he is kind of over the top and um, very extra sometimes, he, he must be saying th enough true things that make him attractive mm -hmm. to, to his audience, you know, um, I don't think, you know, despite his personality and despite, you know, many other personalities like his, like you have to say something that's true enough for people to latch on. Like Absolutely. if it's complete yeah. craziness, right. you're just kind of labeled as a crazy person. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, I saw before I started actually looking into his stuff, I saw him pop up on my Instagram reels every now and then. And it was kind of like, oh, like, look at this guy. He's like another, like, kind of like playboy dude, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, but if you actually listen to his stuff, it's like there's still something there that's like hooking people in. Yeah. And it sounds crazy. It sounds like, oh, he's saying mm -hmm. truthful things. It's like, oh, you like Andrew Tate? <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, no, no, that's, it's not quite that. But I think his take on masculinity is clearly resonating with people. Yeah. At some level. Yeah. Yeah. There's, it's, <clears throat> I see a lot of parallels too with like the rise of Trump yeah. to this. Um, and Shapiro makes this point a lot. Like when, when things on the left are just kind of breaking down. Um, he'll like, he has this line. He's like, this is how you got Trump. And like, he yeah. makes that yes. point all right. the time of like, you know, when there's this much happening in the opposite direction um, of this kind of like coddling of the American mind, yeah. um, then you get this hyper masculinity and like, no wonder yeah. it's being taken up. So it's like, I, that's kind of a phenomenon I'm seeing in Andrew Tate. Yeah. And it's just kind of interesting that like, you know, okay, we can look at the things he's saying uh, and you can agree or disagree, but the <laughs> fact that so many people mm -hmm like have his stuff all over the place. It's, you know, aside from yeah. the yeah. fact that he's like a pyramid scheme, but <laughs> right. Right. It's like, but you, yeah. you can't ignore, like he is everywhere for a reason. Yeah. And you can't yeah. ignore it. And mm -hmm. it's not like, well, it's just because he has a pyramid scheme guy. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, he is that. <laughs> but also, right, right. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. do think like that principle of like, whatever happens in one area, like the opposite mm -hmm. will rise. Yeah. That's like, um, like a, a very union thought on the individual level, mm -hmm. you know, on the individual level, whatever you focus on, the opposite will kind of fade into the shadow, mm. but still have a life of its own eventually right, pop right. up. But if it, but the thing is, if it happens on the individual level, it'll eventually happen on a national level because yeah. nations are made up of individuals. Right. You know? So yeah. you know, yeah, if you yeah, get enough individuals that are having this internal experience, it'll eventually manifest itself. In the culture. A, exactly, or, yeah. in the culture. Yeah, right. yeah, I yeah. See, you see that too yeah. with like the breakdown of um, like religion. It's like, if you suppress the religious instinct, it shows up somewhere else. Then exactly. you get Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People taking <laughs> politics religiously. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like exactly. it's going to show up somewhere right. else. It's, right. it's that idea that like nature abhors a vacuum, right? right? And so I think I don't know much about Andrew Tate. I just know like you know his um, uh, like he's a caricature in yeah. a lot of ways, uh, especially with his masculinity and stuff. But like the idea that the culture has been suppressing masculinity. For so long, mm -hmm. and now we have like this new wave of feminism, uh, you know. And I think this idea that everything's trying to be so equalized that it's just naturally just going to pop up, like you said. Yeah. And so right. people are just they're they're hungry for this, they're hungry for reality and truth. And when someone starts to break away from the cultural norm that has been so, uh, I guess politicized and mm -hmm. so uh, almost like it's become like propaganda and on untrue essentially uh people are just gonna 
latch onto it. And right. so any anything that seems different from the status quo, um, especially if the status quo is not uh, uh, adhering to reality, right. it, people are just going to be like, yes, give me yeah. more of that. So, right. yeah. yeah, very interesting. Well, that's where you get like <clears throat> Andrew Tate's Ubermenschian mm-hmm. mentality of like, I, like break the norm. Yeah. Be, yeah. be your own norm. Mm-hmm. And the reason why you're not your own norm is because you're weak, you're scared, and you're lazy. Right. Yeah. You does know, he read? Does he read Nietzsche? Or nah. I, well, like I said, I think he's he's like a college sophomore, like a you know, it, it, it's a wrestler <laughs> that just took his first modern philosophy class, and I was right. like, wait a second, this Nietzsche guy is pretty good, <laughs> yeah, you know? Like yeah, yeah. he's like, I like this, you know? Like, um, Have so you it's thought like, about this, <laughs> right? And I don't know if it's like like just like a very watered down version, or if it's just mm-hmm. you know, hey stuff happens, you know, symbolism yeah. happens, you yeah, know, like people yeah. fall right. into these ideas. Sure, right. I mean, even that's almost like a Nietzschean thought is like, it's not so much my philosophy as it is the philosophy of nature. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Like the will to power is not my thing. Yeah, it's yeah. nature's thing. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yep. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. I have, um, I have a clip you sent, Lee, um, <laughs> from Andrew Tate on how to retain your masculinity yes i just want to play a little bit of that oh, and then here we go we'll see <laughs> we'll see what y'all think and get angry that's how revolutions start like you can call me as sexist as you want but screaming females don't cause revolutions it's screaming men who cause revolutions and when people say that's not true women go marching da-da. yeah women go marching but without men beside them at the barriers without men in police uniforms to protect them. No one's going to care about them or their ideas and none of their ideas are going to be enforced, right? It's only men getting angry in large groups that governments are afraid of because we are the ones who are combative. So if they can reduce our appetite for combat or our appetite for conflict, then that makes it a lot easier for them to inflict anything they decide to inflict upon us. It's, It's like the days of old, right? The, the, the invading army would come in and kill all the military age males or all the boys which will soon grow to fighting age. And they did that on purpose so that they could do whatever they wanted with the society. Yeah. And now they're trying to do the same thing, but they're just mentally castrating men, mentally castrating men yeah. to the point where they are upset with the life they're in and they're depressed and they're confused and they're too busy chasing their own tail, trying to pay the rent to wake up and look around them and understand how badly they're being screwed. And that's what they're deliberately doing. And they're trying to kill the masculine spirit because they need the masculine spirit gone to inflict their tyranny. The first thing I would recommend. So the, the first thing I want to say, <laughs> um, uh, a lot of people immediately like uh, react to when people say they're doing this intentionally. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you immediately jump to like, you're a conspiracy theorist. Mm-hmm. Like this is not like if you ask, you know, whoever he's accusing of enforcing this, if you ask them, they don't, they don't think they're doing this. So obviously it's not true. You mm-hmm. know, like that, that's their first like takedown. It's like, nah, you're just a conspiracy theorist. Right. Um, Andrew Clavin, um, another Andrew, has, <laughs> he has this idea of like, um, he talks about like, it's, it might not be a conspiracy theory, but it's a conspiracy of ideas. Mm. And so mm-hmm. showing that like, when you inflict certain policies, when you raise a culture a certain way, like, you know, like we were just talking about, Coddling of the American Mind talks about that, of like, the type of um, person that you think people are and what they should, uh, how they should engage in culture, whether they should be t- protected or taught how to engage with conflicting ideas or what mm-hmm. have you. Like as that leaks down from the personal all the way up to uh, how you run a city, a state, a nation, um, all of that leads to a type of, of what seems like a conspiracy mm-hmm. of like, it seems like you're doing this on purpose. Like you're making people weak. It's like, actually the, the intentions might have been something else, mm-hmm. but it's yeah. these conspiracies of ideas of like, this is how I think you should run a city. Yeah. These are the policies I think should happen. This is how I raise my kids. This is how we should teach in schools. Right. And then it ends up becoming this type of system that, uh, posits a certain framework that, yeah. you know, obviously mm. he's responding to. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so w- with, with that idea, um, is, is what you're saying like uh, a mother is intentional about keeping her children sh- safe and then eventually goes up to a national level where it's not so much intentional, you know, it's not mm-hmm. the same as the mother, but it's like, but this is the way things have been going yep. and this is what we've been doing. Yep. So now it's just sort of the norm. Yep. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. I just want, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So aside, aside from that, um, he talks about 
men needing to fight men meeting yeah. needing um they're the ones that cause revolutions um and you know women don't necessarily don't. get things yeah. done yeah yeah um right his his historical example is i think a perfect example just like a representation of tate because on one hand i'm not really sure that's true <laughs> Like yeah. it, it might be, it, yeah. but the thing is, it sounds true, right? You know, it, like it's like, oh, this is yeah. like I have no right. idea if that's actually what historical right. armies did. But if you think about it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could see that. Mm-hmm. You speak with with enough authority, yeah, uh, it's right. Gonna sound true, right? It's like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I could see that. But I, right. I think his language of castration mm-hmm. is mental ca- castration. Yeah, mental yeah. castration is like so archetypal. Yeah, obviously. And oh, yeah, because he is, um. You know, if society, if you view society as the terrible mother, the terrible coddling, devouring, castrating mother, mm-hmm. you know that I'll keep you safe, but you must stay submissive to me right. always. But yeah, I'll keep right. you safe. If that's society, then well, what's the opposite? Yeah, you know, it's terrible right. Tate. You know, yeah. it's, it's the <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's the right. terrible male, the terrible right. the father who right. combats the mother. And yeah. that's not to say that there aren't people who are conspiring against men in that way sure yeah you know what i'm saying like if you really dig deep there like there is maliciousness out there yeah it's not to be like oh you know they have good intentions like some people don't sure but a lot of people are just kind of misguided in the mm-hmm. way that they're um running things yeah, yeah. um you yeah. know down from from the family all the way up yeah um, yeah 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 just thinking about um this idea of society as coddling as keeping people safe and keeping people secure um certainly reminds me of everything that happened in COVID, Mm -hmm. you know, because it was the same thing. It was like, well, is this intentional or is this just like, is this accidental or is this just to keep us safe? Like, well, it's, you know, are people trying to keep us in our homes and separate us? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it just like, uh, let's just stop the spread. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, well, more than likely with the amount of people that there are running this thing. Right. It probably is a mixed bag. Exactly. And that's what exactly. Clavin's point is. Like yeah. it's, it's a conspiracy of ideas. There's some yeah. people that want to control, some people that are really afraid, and some people that just don't know one way or the other and yeah. just listening to what, what the authorities say. Right. right, exactly. Right. This seems like a good idea. Let's just do it. Yeah. You know? I feel like um, just based off of that clip that you played from Andrew Tate, uh, there were some truths that he was getting at. Uh, like, you know, men need to fight. You know, uh, the, the women um, don't necessarily you know, make cultural changes, but it's, it's like on an archetypal level. Mm-hmm. Like he's talking about like masculine and the feminine on that archetypal level. And right. like, you know, you mentioned the, the mental castration. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see him trying to reach towards this, like uh, almost like a universality uh, instead of actually looking at like the specific uh, instances. He's just saying like, this is how mass, the, the masculine archetype works and this is how the feminine archetype works. And I feel like that might be a lot, uh, triggering to a lot of people because people, I think it's difficult for people to think in those like archetypal abstractions mm-hmm. where it's like, well, now he's just like, you know, I, I'm a protester, right? And like, I can make change, right. you know? It's like, yeah. yeah, maybe on an individual level, like mm-hmm. you can make change, but it seems like he's speaking on a level that's much more archetypal that I think a lot of people can take issue with, with if they're not, used to thinking abstractly in right. that sense, if that makes yeah. sense. And yeah. then also understanding that um, these things have to be integrated into the individual person. Like yeah. You can have course. like, right. you can't just assume yeah. that a masculine, a male is going to embody only masculine virtues. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. likewise with a woman. Um, yeah. So it's like th- this, again, like this, um, this whole phenomenon of this like rebellion and hyper masculinity. Um, Clavin has been talking about a lot because he sees that kind of coming from the right of, of like a developing mm-hmm. response mm-hmm. to this really, really strong push from the left. So right. it's like, on the one hand, it's, I understand why you're reacting this way, but on the other hand, make sure you understand how to integrate that. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, the idea of rebellion is like, rebellion is great if you are rebelling against a tyranny that's evil. Yeah, of but course. But what are you rebelling for? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like he, mm-hmm. he, he, puts like the two examples of like the French revolution versus the U S revolution. Mm-hmm. It's like, obviously those were different in yeah. the, in the way that they were bucking the system. Yeah. And you can't just be someone that's like, Oh, rebel for rebel's sake. Yeah. Or you just end up with this hyper masculinity that just tears everything yeah. apart. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, so, so the way that's integrated into the person is actually a feminine receptivity yeah. to something higher that you will now rebel against 
the evil for that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there's actually a union of masculine and feminine in the individual yeah. who wants to rebel for something. Yeah. Right. So that's, like that's really important. Right. And I think that's um, not only on a, um, uh, a, I guess, a scale on uh, like, you know, powers and countries, but we're seeing that in the culture, like we, in our recent uh, discussion on Star Wars, like in the, in the culture, there's a deconstructive mentality where it's like, let's rebel against the old ways, mm-hmm. but then they don't know what's actually build up right and so that's kind of what the french revolution uh, was based off of is like the old ways have to go and they tried to implement new ways but it just fell apart it just wasn't in accordance with nature Mm -hmm. um but with the you know with the u.s revolution it was a clear idea of you know freedom and you know man's dignity that they were fighting for and that and that's why it was able to prosper and that's why we can separate like a good revolution Mm -hmm. versus a bad revolution so yeah yeah, that's, that's interesting yeah, the um, the like parsing out of that masculine and feminine, um, the way Andrew Tate talks about women, um, seems like it's not integratable under a non-Christian framework. Like you're you're running on a lot of principles that are based off, like you know, the culture at large is running off the fumes of Christianity, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like the idea of equal men and women. It's like, that's a specifically Christian idea. Right. Um, and if you don't understand how that is, just like watch other cultures and watch what happens when you negate Christianity, you're going to get something like Andrew Tate being like, yes, men up here, women down here, and like really extreme right. mm-hmm. as opposed to like understanding where that hierarchy exists because yeah. the hierarchy exists. So that's, that's, the, that's the nuance of understanding that like on the one hand, you have people who want to say there's no hierarchy. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, you, are, want to peop, you have people like Andrew Tate who say there is hierarchy and women are lower yeah. by value. Mm-hmm. And it's my job to get to the top. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So it's right. because yeah. of power grab. Well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. A, the mixture of power and his conception of evolution. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and, and like his like evolutionary reading of history is like, well, men have multiple women. But yeah. women don't have multiple men, you mm-hmm. know, and men are the leaders. Men, it, but mm. that's all working within, like you said, strictly a non-Christian framework. Yeah, and but it seems like, like that makes sense though. Without a Christian framework, like you were saying, like right. Nietzsche posits that these are natural occurrences. Right. Like the struggle for power seems obvious, other than a response from Christianity. You, know, right. like you really only yeah. have those two options: it's either power dominance or some sort of like you adherence know, to a reality. adherence to a reality. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and then I think that's. Yeah, that's that's where I see the Nietzschean influence uh, most with Andrew Tate, that idea that well, uh, it's it's my will to power, right? And and yeah, you're absolutely right that if there is no morality, then that's what makes sense. Uh, and I've always maintained, and I've talked about this before with you guys, uh, that you know if if it's either God or nothing, right? Mm-hmm. It, and and God can be uh, symbolized by Christianity in the West, or nothing, you know, nihilism, right? And and that idea that yeah, we all that matters is what I try to achieve, uh, and that's that's essentially I think yeah, that's the core that I'm seeing with Andrew Tate. Yeah, so far as I know him. So um, he he does claim to believe in God. Yeah, um, there's another point um, I sent Lee in a rabbit hole for because um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, he he does posit that there is a God. But can you like explain a little bit how he kind of gets to that? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, because on one hand you know, I was thinking about how to describe him. It was like, yeah, he does have this Nietzschean, um, Nietzschean notions of, of power and friendship. Uh, but he posits like an ontological argument Mm -hmm. for the existence of God as well. So he's not like purely Nietzschean. He's not purely like will to power, but he, he believes that, um, you know, this is like a very distilled version of the ontological argument, um, that, because I have the idea of God, God exists in reality, which is, you know, very yeah. like, yeah. you know, God in the mind, the God in existence. Yeah, yeah. So I have an idea of God, God, my ideas are real. And they ha- and if my ideas are real, they have a real impact on my life and how I behave. So therefore that mm-hmm. idea becomes reality. Yep. If, if all, you know, if, if it actually changes how I behave, he also has, um, Maybe you could call it a Gnostic or a Jungian view of of God, or a, a proof for the existence of God. In that, you know, if great evil exists, then the opposing principle must also exist. Mm. 
Yeah. I mean, if even Peterson makes that kind of observation yeah. of like, here's like the horrors of the 20th century. Something must be its opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I did not know that he was a great um, student of Anselm. Yeah, I was going to say, a very Anselmian, <laughs> Nietzschean Anselm, you know. Yeah, um, my goodness. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's it's an incredibly like Distilled the skeletal, version, yeah. but like yeah. it is this sort of, well, you know, my ideas are real, memories are mm-hmm. real, mm-hmm. dreams are real. And like when he's talking about all this, I'm like, yeah. did you read Jung as well? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, because right. like what, you know. When you say dreams aren't real, it's like, well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean dreams aren't real? Right. You know, right. You know, like dreams do have an impact on yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Memories have an impact yeah. on me. Ideas have an impact on me. Therefore, you know, I guess what's causing them or what's generating them is real. Yeah. That, uh, well, th- that, uh, that idea of dreams aren't real, ideas aren't real is very modern. Yeah. Because yeah. the modern mindset is, well, if I can touch it and sense it, essentially, then it's real. And anything that I cannot t- touch or sense uh, that can't be observed empirically is not real. But Peterson makes this claim with ideas too, that um, ideas are not just real, but they actually transcend reality in a sense. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's an interesting, like he's he's kind of escaping the modern notion of reality mm-hmm. yeah. uh, in talking about ideas being yeah, yeah. real. So right. you know, and the, and the, truth is real. It like, seems like the world is already prepped for that, kind of yeah. like mm-hmm. a reenchantment of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, again, that's like seeing him as a cultural phenomenon is like, it makes sense that this is kind of being eaten up. Yeah. Um, I see him a little bit as a like uh, a caricature of what the left thinks Peterson is. <laughs> that's interesting. You know, uh, yeah. like he's saying a lot of the same things, but <laughs> yeah. it's like, this is this is like back to uh, last week's episode when we were talking, I read that quote from Chesterton about like the scattered Christian virtues. Mm-hmm. Like this is what happens when you have all these fragmented parts yeah. that don't seem like they're yeah. coherent, but there's a lot of truth to these things, yeah. but it's not in a hierarchy of value. It's not part of the whole. It's not part right. of the whole, right? Yeah. So you just kind of go walk around headless. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just really interesting to see as a phenomenon. Um, it's like, yeah, you thought Peterson was bad. Like, you know, like, yeah, right. watch this right right it's true because he does he brings in some of these ideas you know he never names them right he never says well i was reading blah 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 and this is right but he's like kind of has that mm-hmm. but he's also got a little bit of like this evolution yeah like yeah. evolutionary uh yeah. point of view like peterson yeah um but it's all like just a very low mm-hmm. like low resolution it was like low resolution hyper masculine <laughs> yeah. version of all yeah. of all those the, ideas the wikipedia version of you know Nietzsche yeah or whatever yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah 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 right right i mean his his argument from like the idea of god to his existence is, i mean it's kind of interesting it is know? very like, interesting because you're talking about well you know if there's 10 people who get together and you all collectively believe this idea and it changes you to become more moral mm-hmm. oh what do you mean it's not real? Yeah. What do you mean yeah. that? What do you mean this idea isn't real? Right. Right. You know? right. Yeah. And it's interesting that he's finding. I think part of his attraction might be the idea that he looks like a man that has found purpose in his life. You know, whether that's leading him on a path of destruction or salvation mm. is, you know, yeah. that's another conversation. Yeah. But I think, like you were saying earlier, that the the culture is kind of prepped for this. Mm-hmm. You know, the the new atheists uh, and and their empirical worldview it doesn't bring meaning. And that's what yeah. we're coming up against right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so people, again, are just thirsty for something that's more than what they've been given. Mm-hmm. And yeah. here's Andrew Tate saying, hey, I can provide yeah. some meaning. And he's energetic and right. charismatic, and this is how reality right. works. And they're like, well, maybe I can break free of that old, meaningless, yeah. empir- empirical way of life. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so that, that's, that's essentially, though, like, again, this conspiracy of ideas that if you thought you were going to suppress that, you're wrong mm-hmm. because of nature. Yeah. Like that's going to find a way, like life finds a way at Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Great movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's going to show up somehow. Yeah. And so you want yeah. it to, you want it to present itself in the right frame, which, you know, ultimately is a Christian framework. But if you say like, no, we don't need all this like hierarchy and masculinity and you kind of like taint, like tamper that. Yeah. It's going to show up and you don't want it to show up in a non-Christian way. You're going to get, you're going to get the barbarians showing up. You know, yeah. Like yeah. that's, that's what's happening. Yeah. Right. Right. You're, you're, yeah. You're going to get the, uh, the Andrew Tate, the, the Nietzschean barbarian. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that just, you see, you see that globally too. It's like the softening of the West mm-hmm. and now you have like Russia and China awaiting on the, on the side. Yeah. Being like, we're here yeah. with all of our hyper masculinity. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> ready to respond. It, right. Yeah. It, it's, it's not a good thing. When, when ISIS was in the news more often, mm-hmm. it was kind of fascinating to watch, uh, some European countries, had, I don't want to say it was a problem, but they had young men 
and young women leaving to join ISIS. Yeah. From mm -hmm. f formerly Catholic countries. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. And so the question was, well, why would any young man want to join ISIS? Right. And why would anyone, w any young woman want to become a bri an ISIS mm -hmm. bride? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. Yeah. Like, what, is, what is the alternative? Right? Well, it, well right. the thing yeah. is, ISIS yeah. presented itself as hyper-masculine, mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah. you know, you know, you're going to get all the women, you're going to get all the gold, you're going to get all the glory. Like, yep. you know, if at you the die in least, Mar, like... At the very least, it's direction-oriented. Well, it's right, like right, We have a thing right. to conquer and come join right. us, as opposed to this kind of malaise, yeah. just kind of like everyone just... Well, that's be, exactly like, right. Yeah. Well, because, you, yeah. you know, I'm certainly not condoning anyone who joined ISIS but you know it's <laughs> disclaimer. A disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, I, say, I just want to let you know like I don't, I'm not saying like you know if you're looking for meaning you should join <laughs> yeah, right. ISIS you know like, <laughs> link in the description right right oh, um, my goodness <laughs> uh, we wouldn't get kicked off Twitter I don't think I think oh ISIS is you know no, so no. <laughs> um, uh, but you know I guess if you know if you're kind of yeah you're you know a young man you know whatever's kind of malaise mm -hmm. and maybe you go to a Christian church and Jesus loves you and everything's right. good yep. And then, but then you hear like this like strong message of be a martyr, yeah, like, be a warrior. Yeah, that provides it's meaning. It's like whoa, yeah. that's kind of cool, you know. Well, like, and that's and that's uh, like so countercultural from our uh, Western uh, like modern idea that like eat and drink for tomorrow we die. That's mm -hmm. essentially like the 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 slogan for uh, you know uh, the new atheists, yeah. right? Like just get you know as much pleasure as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing beyond uh, materiality. And and then you die. That's okay. Just accept that, right? Mm -hmm. And that idea that like, well, if like I'll, I'm made for comfort, but mm -hmm. the 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 response, like you were saying with the ISIS example, is just I think it's just that's a great proof for the existence of something transcendent, at least, right? Yeah. Uh, and so we we are really breaking out of that. Like we're on the cusp of breaking out of this, like I said, the the, the new atheist right. mindset. So yeah, yeah. I wanted to um, tie that in a little bit with like Achadia, and we'll get there in a second, but um, he made, uh, Andrew Tate makes his point about masculinity and being, uh, having to engage, and men having to engage in conflict mm -hmm. in order to like keep your masculinity. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about like, you know, that's true in certain aspects, but then the nuance is that you don't actually have to go out and beat people up. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, the, the good, that's yeah, good. That's good. <laughs> the end. Yeah, yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but so like they're, they're, the culture allows for that aggression to be channeled. Like that's why we have sports. Yeah, right. right. That's why we have, you know, MMA. That's, that's like why we have competition. Mm -hmm. Competition is good. It, like it directs the um, masculine energy to something, to build something. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was thinking about the idea, um, like when I have a degree in exercise science, so obviously I'm not like dissing working out. <laughs> I was thinking about working out a while ago, um, like years and years ago. Like my initial like kind of scoff at it was, it seems odd that we like have all this technology and we have all this um, like cultural advancement and so that we don't have to work in the field mm -hmm. and lift boulders. But then we go into air conditioned rooms and lift heavy things. Mm -hmm. Like right. why? You know, so like mm -hmm. there's something about the, the point he's making he he makes this comment about culture at large is that it's making men soft. And so I yeah. agree with that yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um but we've had this discussion before but like the progress in technology and by technology I mean like any type of like progress. So yeah. like even even books are a type of technology. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Any movement, any advancement in that area gives you two options. You can either like so you don't have to till the field anymore, right? We have technology for that. So now you can either be intentional and pick up heavy loads intentionally, mm -hmm. or you can be a chadic. Oh yeah, you right. know what I'm saying. So Absolutely. like, as yeah. you progress through technology, you have like you have more and more of a thin line you're walking on, of having to be intentional with the responsibility you take on. You know, physically, mentally, what have you. Be competitive. Yeah. Um, doing things to like engage with the masculine side of you. And that applies to women as well, or you get soft. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're seeing how the West and just, you know, progress in general globally is making people less engaged with things that are difficult. Yeah. Um, and so like, he's really, he's on something really true in that, like we're not doing these things intentionally anymore and we should, yeah. mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean we need to go all the way back 
yeah. and this type of nostalgia of like, let's go have fights and let's start wars. It's like, or yeah. not, like, yeah. let's not do that. <laughs> but let's let's figure out how we engage forward now into the right. future to engage the masculine yeah. instinct. Yeah. Well, and that's like this problem, what you're describing, I think, is uh, a big problem in today's society is boredom, right? Yeah. And back then when you had to till the field and, you know, do all the yeah. traditional things, there was no time to be bored. Yeah, ain't nobody right? got time for boredom. Yeah, and so, like, right now we're, <laughs> like, coming up to this, like, what what do we do with our time, mm-hmm. right? Now that I have machines to do the heavy lifting, as yeah. it were, like, what do I do now? What do I right. do? Uh, and so that's, like, th- I mean, that's why we have millions of views on Andrew Tate or, you know, yeah. and, or, or the, it's just people are, like, trying to fill up their time. Mm-hmm. Uh, with what would have taken your time. Right. With some uh, sort of answer. Yeah. 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 But boredom is really a modern problem. And so to come up with, like, that, that's tying it again with that uh, deal of Achadia. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, is it now is your time for something else? Like, is it good? Uh, or, you know, are you just going to be comfortable, mm-hmm. you know, and just um, appeal to your material, uh, animal appetites? You know? Yeah. So, right. Yeah. 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 I have a, I have a Nietzsche quote. Oh, I'd like to, I'd like to it's not not Bring too it <laughs> not, not too long. This is a uh, Nietzsche from Beyond Good and Evil. Uh, after the structure of society is fixed on a whole and seems secure against external dangers, it is the fear of the neighbor that again creates new perspectives of moral evaluation. High and independent spirituality, the will to stand alone, even a re- powerful reason, are experienced as dangers. Everything that elevates an individual above the herd and intimidates the neighbor is henceforth called evil and the fair modest submissive conforming mentality the mediocrity of desire attains moral designation and honors there is a point in the history of society when it becomes so pathologically soft and tender that among other things it sides even with those who would harm it criminals and does so quite seriously and honestly punishing seems somehow unfair is it not enough to render him undangerous the imperative of herd morality. We want that someday we should be nothing anymore. There should be nothing anymore to be afraid of. Wow. Jeez. He's a, I mean, you know, re- regardless of his thought, like you have to admit, like he's an excellent writer. <laughs> oh yeah. He's, I, I, I love reading Nietzsche, but it's because it's like, you get the sense of seriousness yeah. Yeah. and power. Mm-hmm. And he has this very much like, this is where I think pop Nietzsche comes in, mm-hmm. which is like, he has this very much like take life by the horns and make it what you want. Right. Yeah. And it's like that's that's pretty cool, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um. But I, I guess the 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 point of the quote is this idea of like America, you know, American uh, or America and other developed countries are secured, mm-hmm. uh, you know, externally. Like there's not much war, um, so we're kind of safe there. So what happens now? Right. And mm-hmm. he just says we kind of well, we, we need men to be undangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, we yeah. need to make them soft and tender. Yeah. Um. Because anything that you know, as, as Tate would say, you know, that anything that shows the instinct to aggression is that's, right. That's, that's dangerous. Yeah. You know, that's, that's fearful. Yeah. That's so, um, that's so sticky. It feels like there's so many things that like could go wrong with that and just like not operating. Like this is like the kind of the critique of American culture is that like, we don't really know what philosophy we're embodying. Embo- embodying. embodying. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So it's like, you know, not just taking these things as like, I saw this cool reel about Nietzsche. I saw this cool reel about Andrew Tate. I saw a Peterson yeah. thing. I saw this. And so yeah. like, you just kind of like have this like cafeteria life. <laughs> yeah. where you just like yeah. live by yeah. random things. Yeah. It doesn't like coherently make a culture. Yeah. You know, like that, again, that's the need for yeah. ritual. It's the read for n- the need for religion. It like, yeah. it puts everything in a frame so we can operate functionally. And like, otherwise you just, you get, you get different interpretations of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah. um, that's kind of what I was getting at in our podcast on Star Wars was, you know, if the hero is kind of a, a representation of the culture, what the culture values, he's a kind of projection of the collective culture. Who's the hero today? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Who like who exactly is that? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because it's like you said, like there's like a hodgepodge of philosophies. It's like mm-hmm. I'm not really sure. You say, oh, like it's Captain America. Obviously, yeah, right. yeah. or like, Thor. That's right. my hero. It's like, are you it's sure? Like, yeah, like, right. <laughs> you know, like, are you sure that's the that's the hero right yeah. now? Um, and it, yeah, I think it uh, that certainly speaks to the culture of, like you said, mm-hmm. this like picking and choosing, putting it all together. And so, well, and that's what um, you know, speaking about our Star Wars podcast, uh, Matt, you played a 
clip from Lex Friedman's podcast with Bishop mm -hmm. Barron about uh, you know finding your talent talent and then directing that towards love. Friedman pushed back about uh, on that a little bit, yep. and Bishop Barron's response was really good in that he said, uh, you know, obviously it's not an unhinged uh, searching for your own desire and then just doing that mm -hmm. and saying I'm going to just do this for love. He 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 recommended that you direct it under mentors, right? So placing yourself under somebody who can direct your desire, right? And so that's what we're coming up against in our, uh, like you said, your cafeteria philosophy. Mm -hmm. I'll pick a little bit of this and that, but what's the directing principle of all these ideas? Uh, yeah. If you don't have that, then those ideas are just going to be scattered within your soul. Right. Like, wh what is like, what is leading you down a, 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 a path that's directed mm -hmm. and you have to put yourself under. So Bishop Brown was obviously, obviously talking about real mentors, like people that you can bounce your ideas off of that can give you an objective view of your life where mm -hmm. yours is subjective, all well and good. But then there are also um, ideas and philosophies that exist like that as well. That's not embodied in a person, right. but ideas that can, again, direct all those yeah. multiple ideas. And church tradition. Tr yeah. Church yeah. tradition, uh -huh. the wisdom of mm -hmm. uh, you know, enduring classics, mm -hmm. right, that you place yourself under. Yeah. Uh, instead of just again like a scattering of ideas in your soul. So. Yeah, I, the the thing on mentorship, um, I think that's why I actually think that's why Peterson and Andrew Tate are or you know kind of blew up. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I think Peterson said the two qualities. I think it might have been Peterson. Um, the two qualities that make a good mentor are um, a lot of knowledge on the topic, whatever it is, and commitment to mm -hmm. the topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, does Andrew Tate know a lot about what he's talking about? I don't know, but he certainly sounds like he does. You know, yeah, like, yeah, it's right, like the, yeah. it's a history example. It's like, yeah. oh, that's he, this guy knows history. It's yeah, like, yeah. maybe, right. you know. But he said it with force, <laughs> and he's obviously committed to this life. And so I think people see that. Yeah, he like said they're like, I'm looking for like a mentor. Yeah, and I can see it in you. Right, and I'd like yeah. to, you know, even though. <laughs> Teach me. You right, know? right. You know, like you said, yeah. the direction might not still be there, but it's still yeah. enough of like this is a guy who knows what he's talking about, and he's committed, and I want to be like him. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, how um you have a point on the notes I'm just reading. Um, Tate as the Ubermensch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nietzsche was writing <laughs> and he's about like, Tate. I have yeah. Andrew, he had a picture of Andrew yeah. Tate on his desk while he was writing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the yeah. man I'm modeling my philosophy off yeah. of. <laughs> yeah, cuz so I feel like there's something similar to the way that like Nietzsche talks about the death of God and not this kind of like proclamation mm -hmm. and more of just like a kind of sigh. Um and then posits that like men need to now create their own values. Mm -hmm. um, and so like there's like rise and challenge to do that. Um, you have that on the one side and then you have on the other side, someone like Andrew Tate who posits that he believes in God. And so it's like, and so I have all these values, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's something about like, I don't know if this is a, uh, do you believe in God or not problem? as opposed to what God do you believe in? Mm -hmm. you know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? So it's yeah. like the Nietzsche idea is like, I am God, or I will replace what has been dead, or the God of something else other than Christianity is what I'm following. Like mm -hmm. he might have a different idea of God. So it's like we're beyond the atheistic argument at this point with Andrew Tate, because mm -hmm. he, he claims he believes in God. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, let's see what happens when he follows his God. Right, and then right. you get all these different scattered thoughts and what have you, and so you take for granted what the Christian God has allowed the West to establish. Yeah, abolition of slavery, um, equal rights among men, men and women, like all these things that like these were foundational to the idea of the Christian God, mm -hmm. not necessarily any God. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's not really a debate on atheism or not. It's like, what do we make of the Jesus figure? Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, because I, I think in in just what, how Lee was describing Andrew Tate's belief in God, it just sounds sounds like he believes in a God of some sort. Mm -hmm. But then if he's embodying the Ubermensch idea uh, that it's you know that all that matters is my will to power, uh, you know that's his transcendence, I guess. In a, right. In a, in yeah. A way. Yeah. It because it, he doesn't qualify the Christian God. Or the God of Islam, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the monotheistic. God, yeah, he yeah. doesn't he doesn't qualify it. But you know, I think he's a, he's the Ubermensch in so far as 
Nietzsche believed that the Ubermensch was a man who, of like, who overcame himself. Mm -hmm. Like self-mastery, mastery over impulses, a passionate man, but controlled. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the thing. And I, I wonder if Tate just doesn't have enough philosophical knowledge to like, yeah. to make that like, you know, Nietzsche posited this without God, but Tate, I don't think can, because mm. Tate's the Ubermensch insofar as um, he espouses a controlled passion. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, go get money, go get women, go get cars, but controlled. Like, don't don't be a simp. You know, yeah. about, like, <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. don't don't simp about. It. Like, <laughs> yeah, control yeah. yourself. Right. And the reason why he grounds that is, I think, in like in the end, God will judge one way or the other. Whereas Nietzsche just grounded it in himself. But I don't yeah. think Tate has the philosophical mind to say, mm -hmm. "I'm the Ubermensch." You know, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. and like you know, it's like it's God's dead. You know, yeah, like he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. He's not there. So that's why I, I made that comparison. Yeah, um, but because right. he they. They're both not hedonists, you know. Like Nietzsche right, right. was like, "Live your impulses, mm -hmm. but don't be hedonist." Yeah. And same thing. Mm. It seems like with Tate, he's like, "Live your impulse, live your instincts, right? But don't be a simp, like don't be yeah. uncontrolled about it." Right. Yeah. So it's like the, the, it. the culture yeah. right now is so hungry for meaning, but it's like, what happens when somebody posits that power is meaning? Yeah. Like then what? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there are hypothetical answers to that question. So you can't just suppress that idea that it's like, oh, it's all material. They're like nature doesn't have inherent meaning to it. And this is how we're going to live our life. Mm -hmm. Eventually you're going to have this giant global hunger for that. Yeah. And it'll take anything that shows up. And so you want to make sure that it's the right answer. Well, right. And so I think that yeah. while, you know, the, the idea of search for meaning, any meaning is a step in the right direction from a materialistic worldview. Mm -hmm. Then this, the next step is saying, well, what modes of living provide good meaning? And so I love um, Peterson's, uh, one of his, this was, he had an interview with uh, Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro years ago. I thought it was an excellent conversation. It was like one of the first conversations I've heard with Peterson and multiple people. Uh, but he, in that interview, uh, in that conversation, he mentioned that while we might not be able to uh, describe or, or have uh, a proof for a all bene benevolent God or all good God. He said there are absolutely, there, there's proof for uh, the opposite of that. And he said, so he's like, I can't exactly, the way he put it, he said, I can't exactly tell you which way is going to le lead to prosperity, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that there are definitely ways that lead to perdition. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was almost like a via negativa, mm -hmm. like a negative way towards yeah. getting at a good God. Yeah. That's a, um, actually yeah. Peugeot talks about that and he calls it an apophatic way of understanding yeah. God. Yeah. So it's like we know all these things kind of almost trial and error, but like a, it's not this. Yeah. It's at least not this. It's at least not this. Yeah. You just start to get a picture of what that is. And, and in his, and Peterson in his recent uh, conversation with Peugeot when he was in, was it Montreal or Quebec? I can't mm -hmm. remember. Or one of the, the, he was in Canada. And, he did say, well, you know, if you live a Nietzschean lifestyle uh, where your will to power is all that matters, he said, good luck establishing any kind of relationship. Yeah. And I'm like, that's an, that's an excellent uh, rebuttal, I think, against the nihilistic lifestyle is that, OK, yeah. So now you've moved to a place where uh, beyond the material, you're searching for meaning. It's your will to power. See how that works out for you. Right. Yeah. And technically, like. Typically, we know intuitively that these lifestyles do lead to perdition. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the man who just says, nothing else matters except what I want. Where is that going to lead you? Right. You know, how does your relationship with other people look like? Uh, you know, it, and, and of course, you know, belief in God and, and truth is beyond utilitarian, of course. But if these things are true and we're adhering to reality, it makes sense that we're also going to prosper yeah. in a natural way you know yeah. just like a plant needs water and sunlight to grow mm -hmm. we also need certain truths to live by to grow as well yep. so that, i don't know that's that's yeah my idea when i heard about like mm -hmm. uh, andrew tate and uh, the ubermensch so yeah that's really interesting um i have i don't know if i should play this clip or not oh, oh I'm, boy. I'm gonna play this clip we're gonna be getting um, demonetized or uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um lee just sent this clip into the uh document here um, about uh, Andrew Tate saying that depression is not real. <laughs> this is, I, I think this is one of the things that made him viral. Okay, is that right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, among many, but I heard this is one that like, yeah. really... Okay, yeah, we'll play it, <laughs> and then we'll comment. 
you're depressed, you're living inside of your mind, you're obsessed with how you feel, you don't care about anything outside of yourself, and you're an exceptionally selfish person. That's all they're trying to do is convince you and teach you to be extremely selfish. Mm. Let me tell you something. Depression is not real. Feeling depressed is real. Mm. So you can, feel, you can feel depressed, but you feel depressed, and that is a natural biological evolutionary trigger for you to change something in your life. That's that's your own mind telling you you're unhappy about X. If I went to jail today, I'd be depressed because I'm in jail. Right. I haven't caught depression. I don't have a disease. I'm just upset with my situation. Yep. I have people mess with me all the time. I'm fat and I can't get a girlfriend because I'm depressed. I'm like, no, pancake lover. <laughs> <laughs> you're depressed because you're fat. And you can't get a girlfriend. <laughs> I love pancakes. I, don't know. I, mean, I'm, I guess I'm not a pancake lover. But <laughs> um, it's, it sounds like he's trying to... It, it sounds almost uh, dualistic or Gnostic in a sense, where it's like your environment is not real. It's just like what you, how you react to it. Um, I don't know if you guys... Did you guys see that movie? Um, it was with Will Smith and his kid, After Earth. Am I Shyamalan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I I only saw it once in theaters, so years ago. But it was that idea that uh, in that movie he tried to transcend fear. That was like the catalyst for uh, uh, the the story. Mm. Is that there's a monster that they're uh, trying to evade, and the only way to evade it is if you transcend fear, because the monster is blind and can only sense fear. And so he hunts people based off of their fear, and. At the end, he just mm. kind of just lets go of himself, and it's like he transcends the moment, and he's walking calmly among the monster, and is able to ghost. Actually, that's um interesting symbolism yeah. there. Yeah. But he's able to mm. ghost, um, yeah. and by ghosting, he is able to kill the monster. Mm. Uh, and so, essentially, it, connecting this to Andrew Tate, he's like, fear isn't real. Yeah. Right. Right. And so it's just how I respond to the situation that I'm yeah. given. And so in, in that sense, that's what it sounds like he's getting at. Like depression isn't real. Right. It's just, it's your environment and how you react to it, essentially. Um, yeah. It's, I feel like this is like, this is a perfect example of something that's like, that he says where it's like, all right, buddy, let's unpack this. Mm -hmm. There's so <laughs> much to like split up here yeah. <laughs> because like you can't end up at the sentence of depression isn't real without really understanding what he's saying. And qualifying that yeah. heavily. Like, like, yeah. Right. On. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like you have to qualify that. I, so in the the thumbnail I saw was like uh, depression is an excuse for weakness. Like you don't mm. go to the gym. It's like well I'm depressed. It's like no, it's because you're weak and you're lazy. Um, yeah. But it, that's a it's another Nietzschean thing. Like Nietzsche went back and forth on which, which is the most deplorable universal human trait. Is it fear or is it laziness? Mm. Mm. You know, um, because the the will to power can be expressed negatively as fear and positively as you know as something right. strong grabbing right. what you want. Um, and that men do not become the Ubermensch. They do not transcend themselves or just gain self match because they're afraid of society and they're lazy. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I, I kind of felt like that's yeah. like what Andrew yeah, Tate yeah. was getting. I was like, well, you don't, you're not fit because you're lazy. Mm -hmm. That's because you have depression. It's because you're lazy. Right. You know, it's because you're weak. It's because you're afraid. Yeah. Um, it's like if you had self discipline and mastery, if you had the will to power over yourself, right. you could be me. Yeah. You, know, you, yeah, could, right. you could do yeah, this. Yeah. So it's like, right. it's this. Um, like you said, over overcoming a delusion, it almost yeah. seems like. And that's um, yeah. the Socrates. I just preached on this last Sunday, uh, but Socrates has this saying: "No evil can befall a just man, neither in life nor in death." Mm. And you know, you connect that to Socrates' end, where he has to drink the hemlock. Right, he's condemned to death, and he is perfectly at peace. He and it's interesting. He's actually calming the people that are grieving for him around. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of his disciples. His wife is there, and he's like, "Don't cry for me." You know, like, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm at peace, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the virtuous man, essentially. Uh, and so, I think that's uh, connected to that idea. I think that's where Andrew Tate is getting at something. Yep. That yep. you know, by your own virtue, by your own uh, self discipline, you can transcend uh, certain feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't be tied down to, well, I'm depressed and that's an excuse to not do something. Yeah. It's like, move beyond that. Yeah, there's, uh, there's two things that are, like, really in tension there that I think he's getting at. Is that, like, one, 
you know, you have the, the eternal debate of like, I have no energy, so I don't want to work out. Yeah. It's like, well, that's how you get energy. <laughs> you know? Right, like, right, right. Um, so it's yeah. like, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's like, how, how are you going to kind of pick yourself up to do that, mm -hmm. um, to like get the ball rolling in the right direction? I feel like that's what he's trying to say. Yeah. Like, well, no, when you put yourself in a better situation, then you're not depressed. Sure. Yeah, that's def yeah. there's definitely yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of truth to that. On the other hand, you have how do I reconcile a situation that I'm in that I have no control over? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because that's yeah. not addressed. It's yeah. like you can't, like, I'm depressed because, you know, I have an illness or whatever. Or I'm bitter because I have an illness. It's like you you can't really do anything about that. Like mm -hmm. some, like if you have some medical condition that is like not healable, how do you, how do you move forward without this kind of hyper masculine, like oh, it's your, it's you and you need to just pretend it doesn't exist. Get or, over it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. a way that again, this is a Christian understanding of embracing the cross yeah. as opposed to not thinking that it's there or, or avoiding exist. the cross yeah. or, or creating your own mm -hmm. world. It's like, mm -hmm. the, there's a lot of things in tension there that he's again, like, just shooting from the hip and be like, depression's not real. Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah. you're kind of right, kind of wrong. Yeah. Right. Well, and if you carry out that philosophy to its end, again, you get back to that Peterson uh, uh, principle that I just said that, well, good luck trying to establish a relationship. Because yeah. it's like, depression's not real. It's just what you make of it. And it's me, myself, my power. Then it's like, yeah. carry that out to the end. Like, how do you interact with people? Yeah. You know, like, how do you let their love, how do you receive their love? Mm -hmm. How do you trust them? You know, how do you build a relationship without actually being vulnerable? That's the yeah. whole point. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, balancing, yes, you know, you can overcome these things with discipline and, uh, you know, go get them mentality. Mm -hmm. But that can't be the whole story. Yeah. If it is, then it's just it's just you in an isolated world. That's, yeah. that's I do feel like it really is an isolated view. I mean, just like a very closed-minded view, um, just like a bad recognition an, un, an inability to recognize that like some people legitimately are in really bad situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's not just like, Hey man, this is, this is all you. It's like some people are stuck and screwed by like, you know, policies that have been in place and just like inner cities, just like people just can't get out of this. Yeah. If you just tell them yeah. mm -hmm. there needs to be some sort of like a worldview shift. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it seems like, I think, I think he's saying it to like the majority of the West Mm -hmm. in that like most of the problems and things that we're dealing with are like self-imposed because again like as we progressed in technology we're just a chaotic and soft and so yeah. all this depression stuff is like yeah. you can get rid of a lot of this it's like yeah but there's still problems yeah this doesn't solve everybody's depression because some people either have a chemical imbalance for real yeah or are in situations that are out of their control and there needs to be some sort of reconciliation with that yeah. and so like i just feel like it's ignorant yeah 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 i I know he has the whole thing on manly duty is doing your doing your job. It's like regardless right. of how you feel, like that that doesn't matter. You know, not how you feel, not motivation, not desire. It's just do your duty because it's your job. And I, I I think it kind of bleeds into here. It's like I know you might feel depressed or whatever it is, but like man up, like buck up. Yeah. Is is mm -hmm. kind of the is what I think he's getting mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. is like, just like do your duty, do your job. You still got to go to the gym. You still are responsible for, for going to work, all this different stuff, but you are right. I think he leaves out. help. <laughs> it's like, yeah. well, sometimes it's not, it's not just I'm lazy. Right. Yeah. And you this know, is the, the complication with yeah. this. The complication is kind of like not a bug. It's a feature in that. Like, this is why you don't have big top down, policies mm -hmm. that effectuate change all the way on the bottom level. You have to have that idea of subsidiarity because yeah. then you need to get down to the individual level where you have parents who say, I'm observing my child and this is what they're struggling with and this is how I respond. And then mm -hmm. it like grows and, you know, local government and then, you know, national government and what have you. Like, this is why you need that idea. But that's why it works out fractally. And like, you can't just paint over a problem like this with one response. Mm -hmm. There's so many individual cases and individual right. tendencies and yeah. situations yep. that you have to be able to respond to the particulars and you can't do that on a national government scale or what have you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think another Tateism. It's just like, just like the generalization. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. depression isn't real full stop. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. next question. It's like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it depends. Like you said, depends. Yeah. Like, like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. All right. I think this is a good place to stop. Um, 
as, as the last thing I'll say, just to put it out there in the, the interwebs, I want to see a podcast with Andrew Tate, Kanye West, Jordan Peterson, and Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan moderator. No. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Joe Rogan That's too much masculinity yeah. for the one room, I think. <laughs> that would just explode. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right, uh, social media. We I fixed up some of the um, links and such. So right now it is um, basically related.com forward slash support. Um, if you guys want to pay $5 a month, you get um, one AMA Ask Me Anything episode um, only for members. Um, you can go to basicallyrelated.com forward slash AMA to ask a question. Anybody can ask a question, but only members get the episode. Um, and I'm Matt Hylam everywhere on social media. You're Coach Lieb. Yeah, Coach Lieb on Instagram. And Father Torres has no social media yet. Yeah, well, it's, it's there, but it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like, hidden. It's an empty room, essentially. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, we'll see y'all later. Bye.